May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. At least one of you, I know, because you've told me, there's an appetite for a good joke to begin a sermon. I have to admit, that's not really my style. Not only because when someone tells me a funny, I tend to say, hang on, could you just explain that for me, please? But also because I tend to start with the punchline or manage to leave it out altogether. And there's always a worry that someone will manage to take it the wrong way and feel offended. Mind you, I suspect the very idea of a punchline is a modern invention. Look at Victorian cartoons in Punch and you'll find they go in for ponderous explanations. Something to raise the smile rather than uproarious laughter. And even being half amused may be a modern thing. Latin and Greek famously don't have a word for smile. None of which is to say, of course, they didn't have a sense of humour. Take this morning's Old Testament lesson. Jonah was told to go off to Nineveh and persuade the people to repent. Given that Nineveh was in what is now Iraq and its ruins lie in the modern city of Mosul, where nothing much has changed over the last two and a half millennia, it was hardly surprising that Jonah said, anything you say, Lord, and promptly headed off in the opposite direction. He was thrown off a ship, swallowed by a big fish and regurgitated. He preached to 120,000 Ninevites who were entirely ignorant of the Hebrew language. And he still managed to persuade them to change their ways. He found a cucumber plant to shelter under. And we're told he was very happy with his cucumber plant. Bless him. He had a crisis of faith when the cucumber plant unexpectedly died. He got cross with God because his mission actually worked. And then the book of Jonah ends with those immortal words, not to mention loads of cows. Some of you get the feeling that whilst it's not perhaps up there with P.G. Woodhouse or the Muppets, the book of Jonah is not quite there in the theological stakes with St. Paul's letter to the Romans or the dietary chapters of Leviticus either. And as for Jesus, well, his jokes didn't exactly have them rolling in the aisles, but maybe it's just the way he told them. A Pharisee, a Sadducee, and a tax collector went into a bar. Okay, okay, perhaps not, perhaps not that one, but how about, have you heard the one about the landowner who paid the same amount to those who worked for only five minutes as those who'd borne the burden and heat of the whole day? It's hardly a good recommendation of business practice. It's certainly something you'd only get away with once. It's a story that does still get taken seriously and it comes, becomes palatable to its listeners through its very absurdity. That's what made it attractive. That's what got it remembered and passed on. And the strange thing is, this absurd message has indeed resounded down the ages. For Matthew and his church, its message would have been that the Gentiles could come in to the renewed holy people of God. And e even if they'd only stopped sacrificing pigs to Jupiter just the day before. A few centuries later, the Emperor Constantine could go on to bring in the whole of the Mediterranean world. The news could reach Canterbury in the 7th century AD, spread to London and Reading and reach Solemstead when we were still offering up babies under yew trees. It would reach Providence, Rhode Island in 1636 and Christchurch, New Zealand in the 1840s. Wherever this sparkling new faith arrived, people could come in and sign up to its all-embracing work creation scheme just like that. For 2,000 years the message has been the same. You're not late. The doors are still open. 
credo, quia absurdum est, said Voltaire, I believe because it's absurd. St. Paul was of the same mind. He said, the cross is an absurdity. You've got to be joking, they said, when Jesus told him this ridiculous parable about equal pay for five minutes of work. It could only work once. The Jews may have thought as they guffawed mournfully behind their beards. But for each newcomer, it only needs to work once. And it continues to this day. Come into St. Mary's next week, we can say to people, come into St. Mary's next week and you'll find a space ready for you.